Namaste. This is David Hawthorne at astroview.com. Today is the 17th of June, 2014. We're going to do a Vedic astrology reading for Elliot Roger based on the 24th of July, 1991 at 11.05 a.m. in London, England. Now this birth time was rectified by a systems approach astrologer by the name of Sumit Chum, and this rectification has been approved by Professor V.K. Chaudhary of India. Now, this Elliot Roger went on a killing spree on May 23, 2014, in Isla Vista, California, near the campus of the University of California, Santa Barbara. He was 22 years old. He ended up killing six people. He injured 13 other people, and then he committed suicide as well. Now, I am using systems approach to interpreting horoscopes as developed by Professor V.K. Chowdhury. In the first house, we have the sixth sign Virgo at 8 degrees ascending. This is the ascending or rising sign, Virgo. In the second house, seventh sign Libra, third house, eighth sign Scorpio, fourth house, ninth sign Sagittarius with Moon and Rahu Sagittarius, fifth house Saturn in Capricorn, sixth house, it's a retrograde Saturn in Capricorn, sixth house is Aquarius, seventh house Pisces, eighth house Aries, ninth house Taurus, tenth house Gemini, and K2, the southern node of the Moon, at 25 degrees in Gemini. 11th house, 4th sign Cancer, with an exalted Jupiter and Sun in Cancer, at 7 degrees. 12th house, we have Leo, and we have Mercury, Mars, and Venus, all in Leo in the 12th house. Now, using systems approach, we say that for Virgo, the four most favorable planets are Mercury ruling the chart, Venus ruling the second house of wealth, status, and family life. Jupiter ruling the fourth house of parents and property. And Moon ruling the house of income, friendships, and older siblings. But according to systems approach, the sixth ruler, the eighth ruler, and the twelfth ruler can become functional malefic planets if multi cone signs fall in the 6th, 8th, or 12th. 6th, 8th, and 12th houses are called Dustan Bhavas, inauspicious houses. Planets going into those houses become weak, and planets ruling those houses can, in some cases, cause adverse effects. And for Virgo, they definitely do, because this 6th house contains the multi cone sign for Saturn, so Saturn becomes a functional malefic planet. It can bring conflicts and disputes and mental tension, health issues, litigation disputes, that type of thing. The eighth house contains the multi sign for Mars, so Mars in any chart can bring setbacks, delays, obstruction, accidents, and death-like experiences. And the twelfth house contains the multi sign of Leo for for the sun. So sun also becomes a functional malefic for the Virgo rising sign and cause, can cause adverse effects. So for Virgo, Saturn, Mars, and sun, along with Rahu and Ketu, are five functional malefic planets. So Virgos can have some challenges. Now it it matters whether a planet has an impact. Without an impact, then even a malefic can be benign, but we still have to evaluate each planet. We start with the ascendant or rising sign degree, which is 8 degrees. This is most effective point of every house. Any planet close to the most effective point has an impact. So we see that Saturn is at 9 degrees, almost 10 degrees. It's close to the most effective point. So it's afflicting this fifth house of mind and children and education. And Saturn aspects 3, 7, and 10 houses away. So it's afflicting the fifth house. It brings this conflict and mental tension. 
Saturn is afflicting three houses away into the house of relationships, so it brings a lot of mental tension about relationships. It afflicts seven houses away, the house of friendships and older siblings, so it brings that conflict and mental tension. And it afflicts the second house of wealth, status, and continuation of family life. So it brings some conflict into family life. So his parents, for example, were divorced. So Saturn, we see, is a first-rate functional malefic, and it's afflicting four houses, the fifth, seventh, eleventh, and second houses. We also see that Saturn is opposite Sun and Jupiter. If it's within five degrees, it causes adverse effects. Now, this house is already afflicted by Saturn itself, so the house becomes weak. So Jupiter is weak on that account, and it rules wisdom, morality, divine grace. But it's not within the five degree orb of Saturn directly. But look at Sun. It is. See, Saturn's at nine degrees, Sun's at seven degrees. Even if we round this off to ten degrees, it's still within five degree orb. So this Sun and this Saturn, both are malefics for this chart, are basically in a planetary war. They're afflicting each other. And sun rules a house of losses, depression, isolation. That, institutional life, prisons, hospitals, ashrams. So this is not good. This Sun, Saturn afflicting each other. And Sun is authority figures. So it gives him tremendous conflict with authority figures. Even father figures. And Mars, only this eighth house, is also close to the most effective point. Eight degrees, Mars is less than twelve. So Mars is afflicting the house it occupies, which is the 12th house itself. So losses, expenses, hospitalization, depression, end of life. And Mars aspects four, seven, and eight houses away. So one, two, three, four. It aspects the third house of mental development and self-expression. So it brings some kind of violence. Eighth house, Mars rules this eighth house of violence and death-like experiences, vulnerability, transformations. It also afflicts this sixth house ruled by Saturn. So that brings mental tension, health issues, financial issues, and eight houses away, which is the house of relationships. Plus Venus, which is women, and wealth and status and continuation of family life is in the house of losses, and it's afflicted by Mars. See, it's within one degree. This is a huge affliction. Mars ruling the eighth house of death-like experiences on Venus ruling women. Mercury rules the chart. It's in the 12th house. End of life, hospitals, depression, isolation, separations. By the way, the 12th house is also foreign lands. When the ruler of the house of foreign lands is weak, afflicted, debilitated, or badly placed, the person should never live abroad. Now, his son, ruling the 12th house of foreign lands, is afflicted by Saturn, ruling mental tension and health issues and disputes and conflict. So this is considered a weak 12th ruler, so he should not have lived abroad. He should have stayed in England, but he was a, an infant when his parents brought him over to USA, or a young child. So this is definitely a challenging chart not much support here. Even Moon ruling the emotional state is in Sagittarius ruled by Jupiter and Jupiter is in a house afflicted by both. Saturn afflicts his house, Sun afflicts his house. So this house is completely destroyed and it's the house of friendships and fulfillment of desires. He never, he never felt like he could get his desires fulfilled. Let's look now at the timing of events. He went into his son main period in May 2012, and he has been planning these this violence for a couple of years, actually, or at least a year. Sun rules that 12th house of losses and depression. It's afflicted by Saturn, ruling conflict. Sun's in a house that's afflicted. This is not good. This is a weak sun. The operating planet at the time of the violence in May 23rd was Rahu. 
running from July 2013 until June 2014. So he never made it to Jupiter. He got, he did the violence and committed suicide here during Rahu. And Rahu can definitely be violence, no question. Let's take a quick look at the transit chart for May 23rd. May 23rd, Rahu and K2, we're in odd signs, Libra and Aries at 3 degrees. Right on, look at this, there it is. Uh, this K2, operating out of Aries, aspects five houses away, one, two, three, four, five. K2 is at almost four degrees, this Mercury's at four degrees, and what does Mercury rule? It rules the chart. So there's a major clue right there. The ascendant was 8 degrees. Sun, a malefic planet for him, was at 8 degrees in Taurus. So it was afflicted in the house of father and the house of self-expression. So often you can see things in the transit chart, no question. Let me finish by sharing with you the comments made by Professor Chowdhury on this chart. I think they were quite brilliant. I'll pull these up here. So he points out that the conjunction of the Lord of the 8th house, that's Mars, with the Lord of the 2nd house, which is Venus, so this conjunction right here in the 12th house, does not give a relationship and one is extremely disturbed. It is further enraged by affliction of the sixth Lord, that's Saturn, to the most effective point, MEP, of the fifth house, which is the mind. So hatred comes out of acute anger and disliking, that's through the sixth ruler, sixth Lord, Saturn, in the fifth house of mind, near the most effective point. So it afflicts his fifth house, and it afflicts the houses occupied and aspected. So it does afflict this fifth house of mind, seventh house of relationships, eleventh house of friendships, and twelfth house of continuation of family life, wealth, and status. So all those are violated by this affliction. The impact of the functional malefic sun also on the fifth house of mind and the eleventh house of friends makes it further deep. And the influence of the eighth lord, Mars, on the third house, so Mars aspects four houses away, four, seven, and eight houses away, so one, two, three, four, onto the third house, brings in the incidence of suicidal tendencies. So this is the chart for Elliot Roger. Our hearts and prayers go out to the victims of the violence and also to his family who are quite distraught over this horrible tragedy. Namaste.